Hello and welcome. It is Michigan's Auto Talk podcast. This is episode 83. I am producer Phil Tower. In just a moment, you'll meet our host, Al Schwinkendorf and John Puick. We remind you every episode from number one through this one, number 83 of Michigan's Auto Talk podcast is about celebrating the automobile, everything automotive. We're also about helping and supporting you. Car and truck. Yes, we talk about trucks on Michigan's Auto Talk podcast. Car and truck owners across the great state of Michigan, birthplace of everything automotive. And by the way, you can check out our previous episodes wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify. You can listen on your Amazon Alexa smart speaker, Google Podcasts. We're pretty much everywhere. And uh, we are pleased to welcome back. We talked to him a couple of weeks earlier. He is Josh Russell. Josh Josh Russell, I used to talk on the radio for a living, executive director of the Gilmore Car Museum in beautiful Hickory Corners, Michigan. And Josh, welcome back to Michigan's Auto Talk podcast. Thanks for having me back. Don't worry about it. I I even have a hard time saying my name fast, so it's not just you. (laughs) Try mine. (laughs) Exactly, right? Yes, and that's, that's without... You know, still having had a few beers at uh, Oktoberfest, which you did several weeks ago. Well, it is, um, you know, getting close to holiday season as we talk here in November. And I I wanted to talk mainly about the fact, the most important thing, Josh, that uh, the Gilmore Car Museum stays busy throughout, you know, the, the Christmas season and into the dead of winter because... You know, winters, we don't have the amount of snow we used to have back in the good old days. Um, but you you guys stay active during the, the winter months. And, and has that always, just for a little bit of history, I know the Gilmore has a, a great history. Has that always been a thing? No, that has not been the case. It's a great question. Um, you know, years and years ago, the Gilmore Car Museum was entirely shut down and dormant for the winter. But uh, with all the expansion, uh, the dramatic expansion and all the new museums, partner museums, buildings, and everything going on um, at the campus in the last 10 years. Uh, no, the, the museum main, remains open throughout the entire year round. Throughout the winter season, it's only actually closed uh, four days a year on select holidays. So um, in addition to that, we started uh, uh, really scheduling. We didn't want to just wait around for you know warm weather car show season to start up again. Um, into the next year. So we got uh, really aggressive about trying to develop um, uh, winter programming or cold weather programming. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about, you know, some of those things that um, that are on the agenda for us this winter. There's lots of fun to be had out at the uh, Gilmore Car Museum for, uh, for car people. And Christmas is a special time as well, too. I mean, that, that is a big deal for you guys. You, you decorate the museum. But, but talk about some of your Christmas programming if you will josh yeah just last year this will be uh, we started it for the first time um it's called winter wonderland at the gilmore car museum and it is a nighttime holiday lights uh walk through and drive through experience and uh, it runs from uh just after thanksgiving up until december 30th but um it's really neat the entire inside of the museum is decorated for christmas for the holidays you got uh you know trees and lights and um, then in uh, many of the galleries, uh, decade by decade, from the 1890s, now this year all the way up to the to the 1990s, we have you know vignettes of Christmas through the decades that shows what a living room would have looked like and what the tree looked like and what the most popular um, presents were of the era and the furniture <laughs> and what was on the television or the radio and or the phonograph. So- right? It's 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 a pretty it's a really really neat thing. And then the entire outside of the museum. Is, uh, is decorated with lights, and you can drive your family car through, or you can go for a ride in one of um, many uh, of our uh, available um, uh, classic cars, uh, ranging oh, from wow. like okay. 1930s Packards up to uh, 60s Lincoln Continentals and and uh, and uh, and Cadillacs, or even a you know an open air Model A Woody wagon. So it's a really neat experience to, to walk through ever consider- indoors, outdoors, and have you ever considered doing something about um, winter driving and stuff like that? I mean, because you look at a lot of museums like the Peterson Museum out in California, you know, the weather's the same all the time. We're kind of in a unique spot here with winter and stuff like that. And I'm just curious if you've ever 
done any kind of display about the stuff that you know through the ages before it was you know four-wheel drive when it was snow tires and studded tires and stuff like that if the museum ever jumped in anything like that so we had not yet but um this will actually be our third year of uh of promoting and hosting a winter motoring meet on saturday february 4th so when there's uh, a foot or two feet of snow on the ground we now host a winter motoring meet and that's a combination of vintage snowmobile show so mm-hmm. this last year we had you know more than 100 125 uh, vintage snowmobiles and did two stroke power parade laps de- decade by decade with a bunch <laughs> of the snowmobiles but we also now have a gilmore car museum model t that's been uh, a Model T snowmobile that's been converted with uh, tracks and skis. So we're oh, going to yeah. be just like yep. Rudolph, giving rides. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly yeah. right. So we, we now have a Model T on tracks and skis. And then uh, the last couple of years, we were fortunate that a couple of private owners brought out their Model A's and Model T's on tracks and skis, and we were able to give rides in those too. And, and so that's open not just to snowmobiles Sweet. and Model A's nice. and Model T's on tracks and skis, but also to other, whether it's, you know, Subaru or Volvo rally cars or right. Jeeps or trucks yeah. that are all outfitted for winter driving. You know, the idea is you're exactly right. Here in Michigan, we've got several months of, yeah. you know, winter weather. Let's kind of enjoy that and celebrate that. And then outside have, you know, the fire going and hot chocolate and, you know, um, just just enjoy the winter weather. We've been fortunate the last two years where there have been two feet of snow on the ground when it happens. So it was perfect. <laughs> I'm, yep. I'm hoping we get more of that same luck, you know, this year. You know what? I the the coolest thing I think about Gilmore is that it exploits the uniqueness of Michigan and the automobile. Yes. and I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely it's one thing that you know I've embraced since being here, and and we we've tried to to work with it. It really is the idea of like four seasons of fun in Michigan. So it's yes, it's cars, but it's also motorcycles and boats and snowmobiles yep. and and camper trailers and uh and uh and and everything else right so well now i gotta ask to where do you come where do you hail from? from so a mix a combination of uh southwestern michigan down by three rivers and chicago for my entire life I okay time so you're a midwest guy you've yeah, you've seen yeah. and and so you can grasp that and and it is that i mean the old wood boats, the old snowmobiles that, I mean, when I was a kid, the snowmobiles were almost unrideable compared to what they've got today. Um, just all of that. And I love the fact that um, the Gilmore does, I think, is the most diverse automotive museum I've ever seen. And I've seen a ton of them because I, I catch them all. Well, thank you. We're, we're definitely trying and making an effort. And, and where we've added some of these new shows, whether it's for the boats or the travel trailers or the snowmobiles, each one of those are a different group of enthusiasts, right? So it's just trying to give everybody their day out on the Gilmore campus and for everybody to enjoy and to check mm-hmm. it out. Because oftentimes, if you like motorcycles, you might also have an appreciation for snowmobiles. If you like cars, yeah, you might yeah. also have an appreciation for boats, right? And then some of us, like me, I'm afflicted all the way around. I've got all those problems. So <laughs> You're diseased. Um, so no, here, here, <laughs> exactly. well, now here's, here, here's the big question. So when you're inside... I know you got the Christmas lights. How many bubblers do you guys have? How many bubblers? The, bubblers, come on, because that's the, that's the biggest thing of Christmas. Come on, you you gotta have a a good set of bubblers. Bubblers. We like the bubbler, the bubbling lights from the fifties. Yes, yeah, yes, the bubblers. Come on, am we I actually, the only one that doesn't know what a bubbler is? No. That, we no, we have those yeah. we have those on the tree in the nineteen fifties and sixties gallery in that uh, in that Christmas through the decades uh, area. But you're totally so, right. Nineteen like, fifties is that's that's where that's where it's at in the nineteen fifties. Yeah. Nobody else yeah. recognizes bubblers. Are you and kidding we know me? A, Yes. Well, it's almost as classic Come as the on, leg lamp. Come on, man. Come on, John. It's like the leg lamp from <laughs> exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Story. <clears throat> You know, true story. The first time I ever went Jeez, oh, to kids. Gilmore was um, at a tractor show. In that year, Alice Chalmers, which Grandpa had Alice's uh, yeah. on the farm. <laughs> My dad worked for Alice Chalmers. My pulling tractors were all Alice Chalmers. So we went down and took him and his buddies' old tractors, and we went down to the Gilmore for Orange Days. It you know it was, yep, it was yep. tractor weekend, and Gil, uh, Alice Chalmers was a featured tractor. And 
there were so many people that I knew from the tractor stuff that went through the barns that were open to look at cars and stuff like that and became fans. And that's the, the cool thing about you doing the snowmobiles and the boats and the vintage trailers and the tractors and all that is it takes all these gearheads from different um, parts of the, the hobby and it brings them all together. And, um, you know, my dad's been back there like five times since then. He'd never been before in his life. He only went because they were having orange tractors, you know. And now it's just like it's a thing. So you guys do an awesome, awesome job. And it's really cool that we have such a neat venue in Michigan that's not in Detroit um, for people to go see. It's awesome. Oh, thank, thank you. It's great to hear. And we were thrilled. Speaking of the tractor show, we had the tractor show back this summer. Uh, for the first time in several years we're thrilled to have uh the tractor show back out it was my first you know 200 tractors on a tractor parade and all the threshing and sawmilling exhibitions and corn shelling and everything else and and then we had you know schlitz creek blue Be- bluegrass band play during the day so you know it didn't get much you can't get much better nice. than that but nope. it's, it, it's totally the example of trying to have um different programming different events uh to just bring all kinds of folks out to the museum for the first time or, or for the first time in a long time and expose them to all those other things that, that they might also enjoy. Josh, and you're so good at that. Keep it up. Josh yeah. Russell. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Josh Russell is our guest. He is the executive director of the Gilmore Car Museum as we are talking about uh, Winter Wonderland, which typically kicks off right around Thanksgiving time, a little after. Um, we are talking here in mid-November Josh, on this episode, w- when do you plan to open Winter Wonderland for the Gilmore? Yeah, the, yeah it opens. Thank you. The, the first public opening night is Friday, November 25th. So that's the day after Thanksgiving, and it's going to run on select days all the way through um, uh, December 30th. So the best place to go look for all the details, including like what live music we'll have on certain nights and what's going on, it'll all be available. It's all available on Gilmore Car Museum. Uh, dot org yep check it out okay so screw the malls on black friday hit gilmore yeah (laughs) Yeah, and then go ahead josh oh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say and then in addition to that you know i mean we're the winter wonderland is amazing i encourage everybody to come out for the holidays it's a great thing for you know parents grandparents grandchildren you can see santa claus like all that can happen and you get to see you know all the cars in the collection and go for rides and everything like that and see the lights but you know, we then we continue in the winter with some other, you know, indoor events too, like a pint with the past, Roaring Twenties themed, you know, beer, wine, and spirits tasting event, you know, later in uh, in February on February 11th, and then not too long after that in March, we've got Hoods Up weeks and horsepower tours where the hoods are up on all the cars, and we talk, have guest speakers come in, uh, engine builders and uh, restorers and subject matter experts talk about muscle car engines and what makes them special and, and some of the cars that are in our, uh, in the fifties and sixties gallery and, and race cars and cars in the muscle car gallery. So we try to do stuff all the way through, uh, the winter to, yeah. to have people be able to come out and enjoy. And one important point about those classes is you get a, a, a significant discount, a, a better deal in those great classes and on all the programming as a Gilmore car museum member. So that's something to keep in mind. I, I know the memberships, you can get a, Family membership is $85, uh, just an individual membership, $55. And talk about the perfect gift for the guy who has everything or the grandfather who has everything. You've got all kinds of different levels. And, you know, just I I love the idea of giving a Gilmore Car Museum membership. It's true. It's a great reminder. Thank you, because it it is. Having a membership means that you can walk into the museum any day that it's open, right, and enjoy and walk into any of the shows. If you drive a car or bring a vehicle and want to register it for a car show, then it's an additional charge. But if you're a member, you can walk in to any of these shows, any of the, you know, that we're talking about, unless it's a special event. And uh, and you're absolutely right. The reminder for like the, the winter workshops, the hands-on tech education workshops on Saturdays, those are in the winter, uh, whether you're learning about welding or sheet metal uh sheet metal fabrication or paint body or engine building like those are discounted for members and then for the sunday uh winter lectures all the way throughout the winter months like january through april those are free for members all you have to do is register uh and you can just come and enjoy yeah i just i have one final question 
can we go to the website and see what's on the menu this weekend for your Oktoberfest deal? So it's, I wish I could say yes, but no. Uh, in, okay. in that case, I can tell you for certain that um, Haymarket uh, Brewing out of both Bridgman, Michigan, and Chicago is our official beer sponsor for okay. hey, for for uh, Deutsche Marks Oktoberfest. So I know we're going nice. to have some uh, some fest beer, some Oktoberfest beer and specialty uh, cans from Haymarket. We're also going to have some Bells Oktoberfest and then we we have an entire menu of traditional uh, German food. Uh, I'm like going to say dude, my, my name's Schwinkendorf, so I'm looking for <laughs> schnitzel, I'm looking for spetzel, I'm looking for sauerbraten, yep. you know what I mean? I think I'm heading down just to eat. That's correct. That's correct. All, All right. right. Well, again, it is Winter Wonderland that kicks off on the 25th of November. And, of course, great classes, all kinds of things going on at the Gilmore Car Museum uh, throughout the winter of, well, I guess it's 2022-2023. Josh Russell, our guest on this episode again, uh, the executive director of the Gilmore Car Museum. You can learn about everything we talked about, plus the museum memberships at gilmorecarmuseum.org. Josh, any final thoughts? Anything we didn't ask you about you want to plug real quick? No, thank you. I just would uh, encourage you guys and your listeners and anybody who's interested, yeah, take, come out and, and, and check us out in the winter. Pick out one of these events that sounds like it'd be fun to you or fun for you and your family. And, you know, it, sometimes it's we're all trained to go out to car shows and to go places in the in the summer months exactly but you're going, exactly you're going, everybody's you're parking going their cars yep. you're going stir crazy in the winter so sometimes it's nice to come in and inside our heated buildings and come and enjoy the museum and the exhibits and uh and maybe do some of the workshops right because winter is a great yep. time to be wrenching on your car or your project to try to get it ready for car show season Yep. You know what? Thank you for doing that because you're exactly right. All the, the car shows are just the – I'm old guys, so there used to be certain spots around town. There's one on Plainfield and one on 28th Street where the hot rodders would meet Friday and Saturday night and BS and bench race in the parking lot and stuff. And that just goes away for like four, five, six months. And you guys are um it that doesn't have to happen they can go down there they're not going to drive their car that they drive to wednesday night at uh, the cruise in but you go down there and uh, let their hobby flow 12 months out of the year i think that's great no well, it's it's another another example or things that you can check out uh through the website or, or the facebook pages we actually have the red barns raceway slot car track as well yep. so there's yeah. a club that organizes that and they race throughout the winter months hang and, on you know wait that's a minute. open, What's yeah, that's open they? To folks <laughs> that's open if you want to check out get more information on the red barns raceway at gilmar are Park they the big scale slot cars uh is, there's is no they're standard they're smaller scale yeah, yeah they're, they're the not ho they're scale. bigger than ho right no they're the uh if i remember i i, I, I could be wrong it's been a while but I yeah, believe I ought there to know, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. When I, small, when I was a the kid, there were a couple of hobby stores in town that had big tracks where you could go in and you rent a controller, and you go plug it in, and they had like a ten wide, you know, racetrack, and you bought these kits and built these sprint cars. Uh, um, John, our our buddy, um, DJ's hobbies, all his oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Yep. And yep. yeah, that was that was a thing. Yeah, that that could uh, flow. That could flow maybe on his track, depending on how badly. Okay, you I gotta to go win, check it out because I, I I do that. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to check it. out check out the slot cars at Red Barns Raceway and uh, come out for one of those open track nights if uh, or days if you'd be interested. And then I still have to put it together. Um, but one thing I'm working on for the winter too is, believe it or not, I was able to find uh, and bought for the museum last year a uh, like a cub scouts pinewood derby track so oh, we're talking about right. trying to put together Dude, a pint oh. a, a pintwood derby night for nice. uh nice. you know for adults to come and have three pints uh, and i win can yep. we yes. please Correct. record an episode that night <laughs> beer it's and one of my podcasting projects. go together josh are you kidding me beer and podcasting uh, you know it's like baseball and apple pie see now now this is now now my point of view i don't i don't like this because <laughs> I, I i was okay. the one that like i made it myself and it was literally like a tack hammer nail was yep. the axle 
and yeah, I sanded dude, it myself, I and then you I so get much all better. I know, but well, I was. W- this was way before we met, but no, I just I see all this, and then you get the I get there, and all these parents, dads yep. that know what they're doing. You got a Schwankendorf and a, a oh, yeah. that are that are going to town, and I'm like, what the hell, dude? My dad's just like, I don't know. This is what failure feels like. You, you know, know what? That. I had a whole <laughs> school. I had a whole school. It was like something you'd see at the Gilmore for my Cub Scout group. And I was a Cub Scout leader, and I took care of um, Pinewood Derby. And everybody went to the state finals, and I had two that went to the nationals, and it wasn't my kid. It was somebody else. Um, and then I let other parents do the rest of it, but I, I oh, just yeah. did it for the you Pinewood Derby up. because yeah. that's my thing. Yeah, I, yep. dude, it's all about balance. Oh yeah, I love that. So <laughs> I, I got to go out there and I got to do a slot car. I got to drive a Model T and I got to go out and do the Pinewood Derby thing. Well, and I'll be the one hammered on the side screaming, "You should have done better." And, and we'll build one for Phil and make yeah, it exactly. the slowest. How's yeah, that? That's exactly. That's fine. That, that'll that's work. Fine. Just, that'll work. Josh. I love the idea. Pinewood Derby. Please report back to us on that. And as soon as you get a date. We are going to make a date for a road trip. That sounds like one of the most fun, biggest events for Gilmore. I mean, that thing could end up being huge. I absolutely love that. He's going to have to grow to Valve Cover Racing. Yeah. 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 That's a thing, too. We'll try it the first time. We'll see see how it goes. But, yeah, I'll I'll definitely let you guys know, and and that should be be a fun one, I think. Again, something else to do in the winter. That that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, thank producer. you so much for doing what you do and coming on our podcast. We really appreciate we it. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, it is is a lot of fun, and you you always instigate trouble, Josh, which is even better when you bring it's, up things like that. I that's my it. job. That's your Look job. Look at the characters he knows and hung out with. He goes, oh, in right, my exactly. Early years, yeah. I hung with Freiberger, <laughs> and I heard him with him and him and him. It's of course he's <laughs> just low key. Naughty. Yeah, just Twenty low hours key. of lemon is nothing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that puts the wraps on episode number seventy nine for Michigan's Auto Talk podcast. Thank you again, Josh Russell, executive director of the Gilmore Car Museum, GilmoreCarMuseum.org. Until next time, and episode number eighty four. I'm producer Phil Tower. I'm Al Schwinkendorf. I'm John Puig. Thanks for listening.